state what is meant by nuclear fusion. So nuclear fusion is when two nucleus come together. So two small nuclei coming together or fusing together, combining to form a larger, more stable nucleus. Keywords would be two small nuclei combining. What's up? You want to form a larger nucleus. Second part. Like I've mentioned before, not all marks are created equal. This is two marks. This pain is also two marks. Choose your heart. Know your definitions. Okay, here sketch the variation of binding energy per nucleon. For values between 1 and 250, well, I know the turning point. The turning point is around 56, which means I should equally divide this by 1 fifth. Be somewhere here is 56. Two, 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 four. Further, further. One, two, three. Okay, so somewhere here. During the exam, you have ruler, la, okay? So you shouldn't have this pain. So it shouldn't, there shouldn't be zero binding energy. So uh, we're going to have a peak here. Graph should look something like this. No? Decrease. So one mark is the turning point. In fact, the turning point includes marking out 56 here, one mark, because this is an important point, okay? The other mark is for the gradient of the graph. So if your initial gradient is steeper than your final gradient, it's good enough for you. Cool, moving on. Oh, on my line, oh, gee, you need to label. Point X that could represent a nucleus undergoing alpha decay. So if, I, if I'm a nucleus and I vomit out alpha decay, it's because I'm too big, I want to be smaller, downsizing. Okay, so let's say X become Y plus 4 to alpha. Downsizing, right? Let's say this is A, Z. This would be A minus 4. This would be Z minus 2 downsize. So if I undergo alpha decay, I am basically decreasing the size of the nucleus, meaning the problem here is nucleus was too big. Somewhere here. Lah. Doesn't matter as long as it's on the right side can already. So do, 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 do. they say on the line. Okay, so this is point X. If they say on the axis, then I will label X here. On the line. Label on the line. Don't label on the axis. Follow the question. So I need to decrease the size of the nucleus because the problem is nucleus too large, too big, not very stable. Too many protons squish together. They don't like each other. So two protons and two neutrons decided to yeet the nucleus, okay, or the nucleus yeet them away, depends on perspective. Okay, fusion means combining, so you need a small two become one. You want to increase size of the nucleus. Why do we increase? Because nucleus too small, it's lonely, so they fuse together. Okay, so then somewhere here, though, anywhere here, can you really? Why? So one should be before the turning point, one should be after the turning point. Uh, not so big, but hang on. It's gonna mark it closer to small values. Why? Because normally fusion happen for what? Helium, uh, hydrogen. Uh, so it should be close to one. Uh, too far away. It's, it's close. Because they didn't start from zero. Okay. 
So your Y is here, your X is there. This is four marks. I'm very happy. Six marks left. Okay. So now I feel better about myself after that question. So here you see a nuclear fusion process and the equation is given to you. And here's the binding energy. Oh, in Joule. Very nice. The fission of one mole of Z releases this much energy. Determine the binding energy per nucleon in mega evot of Z. Okay, so this one requires calculation. I mean, a lot of calculation. Oh, yes, four marks. So maybe I want to find how much energy per particle because a reaction is per particle, right? So I'm just going to first find the energy from one particle of Z. So let's say this is E. E would be equal to 1.77 times 10 to the power of 13. One mole, so I need to divide by the Avogadro number. Because one mole has this many particles. This will give me 2.94 times 10 to the power negative 11 joule. Everything is 3SF, so my answer should be 3. Or maybe more than 3 if I can afford it. 2.940 times 10 to the power of negative 11 joule. Okay, so now I want to find the binding energy for Z. So I know that energy released in the reaction is equal to the change in binding energy. So I will take the binding energy of the product minus the binding energy of the reactant. I know the energy release, uh, it is nine, it is this 2.940 times 10 to the power of negative 11. Binding energy of the product. Product has SR and X, strontium and xenon. Ah, strontium and xenon. So 1.25 times 10 to the power of negative 10 plus 1.81 times 10 to the power of negative 10. Sure, no need to multiply by nuclear number. No need, uh, this is not binding energy per nuclear number. In your trial paper, this was binding energy per nucleon, then you multiply by the nuclear number, but this is not per nucleon. Okay, I know they want me to find per nucleon, but I'm not there yet. So this is the product minus the reactant. Reactant is Z, so the binding energy of Z. Just put BE for Z here, something like that. 2.940 times 10 to the power negative. So from here, I can find the binding energy for Z. And 1.25 plus 1.81 minus. 0.294. So I have 2.766 times 10 to the power of negative 10 joule. Okay, I don't finish yet. This is binding energy for Zach. Now I need to find binding energy per nucleon number for Zach. Okay. 2.766 times 10 to the power of negative 10 joule divided by how many nuclear numbers do we have for Z? What is Z? Mm, mm, we need to balance the equation, my friends. Okay, so a few comments first. Uh. Neutron got no binding energy, okay, because it is a free person. It's not bound to anything. These two neutrons also no binding energy. That's why they are not involved in the equation. Okay, number two, you want to find Z, you got to balance the equation. So the nuclear number for Z, A, this nuclear number is 93 plus 137 
plus 2, 93 plus 137 plus 2, minus 1. Yeah, I just throw everything down here, okay? 93 plus 139. 93 plus 139 plus 2 minus 1. Okay. Mm -hmm. I start my calculator. I have one point. One eight seven one point one eight seven times one two ten to the power of negative twelve two. Finally, we want it in mega evo, so let's convert. 1.187 times 10 power 7 joule. We want to convert to mega e volt. Let me divide by electronic charge first to convert this to e volt. 1.6 times 10 to the power of negative 19. This will be 7.419. Times 10 to the power of 6. Very nice. So 7.42 mega E. Not difficult, just a bit tedious. So I just step by step. Lah, okay. Like this is basically the reverse of what they ask you in your trial people. Okay, but never mind. I start first by looking at one mole having this much energy. I know a reaction consists of one particle, so I find the energy of one particle. And this is the energy released from one particle, from the decay of one particle of Z. So then I equate the energy release to the difference in binding energy. Subtract. So once I find, I put everything inside and I find the binding energy of Z, then the rest is just normal stuff. Okay, so this is 10 marks. I think this question is much more doable than the previous one. 